I wanted to kind of start things off uh, by welcoming you to our cabin. This is uh, the cabin that we live in and it's decorated right now for fall season. And this cabin is here on Mount Jefferson. Part of a part of a job of a park ranger is uh, living usually in the park that you're at. So if you're a park ranger at Yellowstone, you would live at Yellowstone. Or like my wife Vicki here, she uh, uh, was a ranger at Grayson Highlands. So she lived in that little cabin right as you come into Grayson Highlands in the right on the right as you drive in. You might see that someday when you go up to Grayson Highlands. So if you're ever kind of, I know we're we're kind of young right now, thinking about well, what do I want to do when I get older. Working in parks is a really fun job. So if and if we, as you get older, if you have questions about that, you know who to call. Just call us up here at the park. So park. I work. Oh, oh, who do I work for? I work for North Carolina State Parks. Here's our patch. And just as a quick review, um, who can uh, tell me just a little bit about what parks are about, what they have, or who they belong? Long to or anything about parks just real quickly and raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can unmute. Uh, Krista. Um, one, uh, they have animals. They do have a lot of animals. They, they, do they like, has, they could, I don't know if they could have seed, but they like, they could have snapping turtles. Snapping they sure turtles. could. You're right. And I've seen snapping turtles at New River State Park in that park. So yeah, uh, Brittany, Brittany, what do you think? Oh, remember to push your space bar down. Remember to... Wayland. My mom's name is Brittany. Oh, well, that's going to happen. So we'll call it then uh, Brittany's daughter <laughs> and what's your name again Waylon. <laughs> okay Marilyn Laylon. Layland okay Layland if okay if I was there I would have heard you that time Layland okay go ahead Layland what do you think about parks um some parks do some parks um uh some parks are for playing playing on like a playground. Hmm. Okay. I caught some of that. Um, Lori, how about how about you? What do you think? Press your space bar down. Did you? Do you have any anything of what you think a park has in it? Are you trying to talk to me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> my dogs, and that's my mom's name. My mom's name is Laura. That's my uh, mom's name. My name is what? Leah. Leah. Okay, so you said dogs. There are dogs in parks. Yeah, there are dogs. To, we like, definitely animals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So let me go ahead and I'll see. Great. All three of y'all were great. Right on. Um, let's just talk a little bit about parks and Mount Jefferson in particular. So Mount Jefferson, here's a map of the park. And if you're not sure where it is, if you know some landmarks that we're all familiar with, everybody knows where Walmart is. So that big mountain behind Walmart or behind the high school, or that big mountain behind the Pizza Hut across the street from Food Line, or that big mountain that's kind of across from Jefferson Landing way up in the way it goes way up into the sky, that's Mount Jefferson. And we have, because we're a park, we have a map that tells you about all the things you can do in the park and all the trails. And there are a lot of different parks in North Carolina. This is Stone Mountain State Park's map. It's an even bigger park. And here is Mount Mitchell's map. And that's the highest mountain east of the Mississippi. And it's here in North Carolina. So there are a lot of parks. And our parks also now have a passport you get for free. And when you, uh, if, when you get it, as you go and visit the different parks, you get a stamp and put it in it. And as you can see, this book is full of 40 pages of 40 different state parks that are all over North Carolina. And they all belong to the people. So are y'all people? Yeah, I see nodding. Yeah, y'all are people, that belongs to you. 
yes, the animals, it belongs to the animals, but it also belongs to the people. So this is a little bit about parks, but you might say, well, how do I know if I'm in a park? Well, if you were to go hiking and wander through the woods, eventually you would go out um, and get to a line. See that line that goes around the park? And that line is uh, our trees and those trees have this sign on them. So when you're walking through the woods and you see this sign, it's, and it's not going to be by a road. It'll be, it, well, sometimes it's by the road, but most of the time it's, these signs are just out in the woods and they, you'll see, oh, there's one. And then a little further down, you'll see another one and another one. And that is the edge of the park. Once you step inside where these are, you're in a place where all the animals and all the plants are protected. The animals can run free. They can do whatever they, they can wander around, do whatever they want. They do what wild animals do. And they, uh, they just kind of live with the seasons, like we live with the seasons. Ranger Tom? Yes. Um, why do, why are some, why are some parks and some are not? Why are some parks what? Different and some are not. Okay, I heard in some or not. What was the part you said before in some or not? Why are parks the same and some are different? I gotcha. Okay, yeah. Well, that's a great question. I guess the kind of way of thinking about it is, you know, we have like North Carolina is different from Hawaii, right? I mean, we don't have volcanoes here, not that I know of in North and North Carolina is different than, say, Alaska, where there are grizzly bears. And North Carolina is different from Florida, uh, where there are alligators. Well, there are crocodiles, too, down there. So each state has different state park systems. So they, they, they eat because each state is different. We have 50 states plus Puerto Rico. Um, we have and the Samoas. We have these different places where there are all these different kinds of parks. Now there are also parks that are the same, all of, well, they're, this, they're run by the same government and that, that's our, our national parks. Like the Blue Ridge Parkway here in Ash County, that's a national park. Um, in Mount Jefferson, we're a state park. And so that means basically the national parks are pretty much managed all the way up to the president. The state parks are managed all the way up to Who's the head? What's the head person? What's the main, uh, the leader job of North Carolina? What do you call the person that's in charge of the state? Starts with a G. Oh. Uh, have you heard of the governor? governor? Yeah, there you go. So state parks are managed basically by the governor on down and the national parks are by the, by the president on down. So that, and they, they're always changed because we live in a democracy and we always have elections and we vote in different people and then they manage differently. So that's a lot we just covered. I'm gonna kind of, I'll get one more question from Laura. Laura, except, go ahead. That's my mom's that's, name. <laughs> I know it was. Uh, what was your question? Um, do, um, in the park, do animals have to um, exercise a lot? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Keep in mind when I, I live here in the park. So when I get up in the morning, I don't go out with a bucket and feed all the animals, all of the birds and all the mountain, well, all the bobcats and all the bears and all the um, raccoons and squirrels. They all run on their own. They all live in a system that's powered by the sun. And we're going to talk, get, get into that in a minute, powered by the sun and the sun's energy that gives uh, light to the plants and then the plants grow, and then the plant eaters go up and eat the plants, and then the meat eaters eat the plant eaters, and then decomposers come in. So all the animals are not like in a zoo where they get fed, where they just kind of lay around in a cage all day, or, a, or a, a, a zoo area, and then get fed by somebody with, a, with food. These animals are free and wild, just like they were a thousand years ago, or even 10,000 years ago. They're all wild. Do you and free. know that leaves can be purple? They can. And let's go ahead. Something I've noticed. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Something I've been noticing around the park is I've been seeing these things on the ground. 
and people are telling me what these are. They, what do you think that is? It's from a tree. I, I think that's like um, a purple leaf. That's a hundred of them in a ball. It's actually this is a walnut. So walnuts what? are falling. They're falling off the trees right now, and I've been noticing that there are these leaves are starting to change colors. Yeah. And I've been noticing around Ash County, these red things are up in the trees, coming off the trees. What they're in the apple. world? They're apples. Oh. Well, apples. that's something else I've noticed because I love the birds here in the park. I've noticed that my favorite bird that lives in the park, this red bird, that's called the scarlet tanager. I'm told it's left. It left Mount Jefferson a few weeks ago, and it's gone back to its son, its winter home down in Central America, south of Mexico. They spend the summers up here, but when winter comes or fall, the scarlet tanager, this beautiful red bird that lives up here in the summer, starts heading south, just like other birds. And I am starting to hear about leaves that are changing color. So let's go outside and see if we can figure out what's going on with all this. You all want to go outside? All right, here we go. Let's see here. I'm right. seeing, here we go. Woo, we're outside. So what is going on out here? Oh boy. Yeah. Wait, um, so, if you see an animal, can you show me? Because I love animals a lot. Yeah. Well, I like we, lizards too. So the most important thing in the world is food. Food is very important. And I'm going to get under here into the and so, water. So the rain's not so rough here. And let's see what we've got. Here's an animal that is starting to change. Mm -hmm. And it is, what is that? Can y'all see that? Is it a caterpillar or is, is a, a woolly worm? worm? Is that a woolly worm? Well, it just dropped it on the computer. It is a pipevine swallowtail caterpillar. There it goes. It's looking for something to eat. This caterpillar is in the middle of a change. It's going to start in just a few weeks to go into what's called a chrysalis. And this chrysalis um, kind of protects it as it changes into becoming a butterfly. Another and, word for chrysalis is cocoon. That's right. And Mount Jefferson loves this caterpillar so much that we have made a patch for it. And so there's the caterpillar. And then there is the butterfly that it turns into. And it eats the leaves of the pipe, the Dutchman's pipe vine. So we're gonna go out here and take a look and see some of these leaves real quick. So what we have, and we're gonna also talk about animals. Let's get out here into the, out into the park. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're seeing leaves now that are starting to yeah, starting to change. Are they changing colors where you're at too? Yes. Yeah. So they're changing colors. I love changing colors. Show you outside rainbow. So what I've been told is happening up here is these plants they have a root system, and they go they go the leaves are out here and then following it down all the way down we see that the the plant is growing in the ground what that, is a root a root system a root system that is they're like little straws that suck water up from the ground from the dirt and the water goes up the tree and evaporates out of the leaves there are little teeny spots on the underside here that allows some of that water to get out. And y'all go ahead and breathe out for a second. Just to blow out air real quick, go. <sighs> that air that you just breathed out is called carbon dioxide. And the animals that live here breathe that out and the plants breathe that in. 
So we breathe it out and the plants go, oh yeah, it's really good. And they breathe it in. Then- I a book about lungs and it had a few words about carbon dioxide. Oh, y'all know the word, good job. So, so yeah, carbon dioxide, that stuff coming out of our lungs is what the plants love, but they can't stand, they have, they have a waste product, uh, a waste, and that waste gas is called oxygen. So the green leaf gives off oxygen and we ah, breathe that in. The other thing that's happening way up in the sky, 93 million miles away from us, the sun is shining down on the leaves when they're green. And that turns that green called turns the light into a special sugar and a special kind of a, uh, what's called a starch. And that all goes down the branch, all the way down the branch, all the way down, and it gets stored down in the roots. All right, you with me so far? That's pretty complicated. Are you okay with that? Wait, I have a question. Okay, let's hear it. Have you ever saw a coyote? I have seen coyotes. Now, coyotes, they're not by them, they're not all by themselves. They're a part of a story. So when I think of a coyote, I think of plants like this plant here. So we have plants. Remember we talked about the sun's energy what making? What happened to that? A beaver chewed that plant up. A beaver did chew that plant up. And it, a beaver has flat teeth and it's a plant eater. And there it's flat teeth are yeah. of the beaver. But the plant eater gets eaten by the meat eater. And that's where coyote comes into the story. Coyote uh -huh. has the sharp teeth and it eats meat. Like us, we eat cheeseburgers and steaks and hamburgers and all that. Coyote doesn't get to go to the store and buy stuff. It has to hunt and it will hunt animals like the beaver. Now this time of year, the beaver, along with a lot of other animals that are up here, like the skunk, there's a skunk fur. And by the way, I bought, we bought this for the park. We didn't shoot it or anything in the park. So this was from, oh. we bought this from Pennsylvania. Wait, so how this, did you get then? What? How did you get them? Did they We kill? We bought them. Wait, how did they get it? How did they? Well, I, that I, I'm not sure. We'd have to find that one out. I'm not sure on that one. If they but killed it, I'm going to be sad. That, well, I don't, I don't know where they got them, but the fur, just so you know, in the, in the wintertime, as the leaves are starting to change, the fur of animals <coughs> starts to get thicker. Now, right now, there are animals there are coyotes out there, there are skunks, there are squirrels that are collecting nuts. They're all getting ready for winter. So they're growing a good winter fur and they're collecting, some are collecting food like the squirrels are and others are getting ready to maybe, maybe hibernate like the bears do. They go into a little bit of a hibernation. Other things that are happening this time of year, like that walnut we saw, there are also, what in the world is this? If I can find it, where is that thing? Let's see. Oh, there it is. What's that? A seed. A seed. That is a seed. That's a seed of a spice bush plant. Huh? And so the seeds are all starting, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are starting to come out and they're going to stay and sleep down under the ground until spring comes along. So we've got our leaves. Did anybody wonder why do the leaves turn colors in the first place? Why do they change colors like this and fall off? Look at that, it just fell right off in my hand. Look at that, they're just falling right off. Because it's fall and leaves have to fall off and fall. Okay, that's a good answer. Now I'm gonna tell you a couple, I'm gonna tell you two different reasons, possible reasons. Now the Indians that used to live up in these mountains, they say that a long time ago, a long, long time ago, animals and plants could talk. And I'll get your questions in a second. So, so they could talk to each other. And one day they said, hey, I wanna have a contest. And the other animals and plants said, okay, let's have a contest. What are we gonna, what, what's gonna, the contest gonna be about? And we'll say, well, Whoever can stay up all day and all night for seven days will get a special gift. 
And the plants and animals said, okay, that sounds like a fair idea. Well, they talked about it and they said, okay, we're gonna start today. So the first day and the first night came along and oh, some of them started to fall asleep. The second day and the third night came along, oh, more of them fell asleep. Eventually, by the seventh day and the seventh night, only a few animals and a few plants had stayed up all that time. The ones that stayed up all day and all night were given the special gift of being able to be green all year long, like this evergreen here. The evergreen will stay green all winter long, but the plants- Plants can never talk. <laughs> that, that's, a, and we're gonna talk about that side of the story too. We're gonna get into that. So, but the plants that did fall asleep, according to this story, were the ones that lose their leaves in the, in the winter time. So let's do another story. And I think you're gonna like this one too. All right, who can tell me about our earth? Is our earth flat or is it round? Round. It is round. Round, let's, really it's round. It really is round. And let's, I'm gonna set this up. So here's our earth. Yay, earth. Now you might notice when you go to your school that the earth sometimes looks tilted. And you might say, well, gee, are the, can't the school buy a good globe that's not tilted? Well, they don't have enough money to do that. It's not because they don't have enough money. It's because the earth really is tilted. The earth is actually on an angle. And when we go around the sun, by the way, the sun is a lot bigger than the earth. So let me get a smaller earth here. When we go around and actually, the earth would be about this big if this was the sun. About a million earths can fit inside the sun. So this tilted earth goes around the sun. When we go around the sun one time, what do we call that time period? What do you think? Now a day is when the orbiting. earth spins around. It's, it's orbiting. A, it's orbited. So when the earth spins around one time like this, that's a day. When... So what do you think when the earth goes all the way around the sun, what do we call that? It's not a day, it's a long period of time and you usually have a birthday. It's a night. No, well, when the earth is, that's a good one. When the earth spins like this, like let's say this is the sun, see how the light is on the side of the earth? When the earth spins around. Ranger Tom? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep going. So when the sun is shining on this side of the earth, that's daytime. And as the earth rotates, when it's on this side where I'm hitting it with my finger, that's nighttime. So daytime is where the light is and nighttime is on the backside. So that's a day when the earth rotates. But my question is, going back to it, we're not gonna forget this question. What do you call it when the earth goes around the, the sun one whole time? And you have a birthday every time it does that. What do you call that time period? I don't know. Any anybody press down your space bar if you think you know. And say it's not a day. It's a year. A year. Excellent. So every year our tilted earth goes through changes. Because our earth is tilted in the summertime. Our part of the earth is pointed toward the sun, but as it makes its way around, so let's say this is uh, summer, like June, July, August, September, and September, neither the nor northern side or the southern side is pointed to the sun, so it's kind of in the middle. And then September, October, November, December, when it's over here, December, is it hot and sunny up here in December? What do you think? Shake your I don't head. think it is. No, it's snowing in December up here usually. So in December, when the earth is over here, it's much cooler. And then December, January, February, March, when it's over here, Tom, you're muted. Tom, I muted you by accident. You're going to have to unmute it on your end. Ranger Tom, you're muted. Thank you. So did we get to the point where we saw that the earth goes around the sun and that's a year. 
And because we're tilted, we have our seasons. That's why, that's why these leaves are all falling off the trees right now. Because Let's these go by and go around in a circle like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. That's exactly it. So if the earth goes around the sun, so it's like July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So it goes like that. So when when it's September, that's when the leaves, this is where it gets interesting. So we'll go back over to the trees here. These trees are basically, and I know they don't talk, you know what? I will say this about plants talking. Some scientists have actually found out that the roots do send out chemicals. And those chemicals are a way that the plants do communicate with each other. So the Indians actually, their story might not be so far-fetched because we know now that plants do chemically communicate with each other. Y'all can look that up later on. I'm just gonna kind of, so we'll get back to the story. So here we have our what plants. Are chemicals? What are chemicals? Chemicals are basically everything that everything is made out of. This plant is made out of chemicals. I'm made out of chemicals. The computer I'm using would be made out of chemicals, plastics. The park truck that I drive would have metals and there's chemistry involved in that. They're all the different things that really make up what, what our earth and what our universe is made out of. And that's all called the study of chemistry. And you're gonna learn more about that as you get older. But for, for our sake, for right now, let's stick, where are we at? So we got plants. We have, ah, okay. So here's what's going on. So the earth has been making its way around the sun. Now we're at the point where there's less light coming down to North Carolina. There's not as much light this time of year. And the plants, if they were to talk, they'd say, hey, I'm not getting as much light as I usually get. And I'm using all my energy to suck the water up from down under the ground. I'm wasting my energy. I'm getting less light from the sun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off the water from down below. So the water stops going up the tree. When it stops going up the tree and stops going evaporating out of the leaves, this green stuff, see that green? That green stuff called chlorophyll starts to decompose. It starts to break down. And when it breaks down, the colors that have always been here that have been hidden by the green, they start to show up. So the yellows and the reds and the oranges all start to be visible. And then the leaves fall off the trees and they start to renourish the soil. So the soil, gets re-nourished by the leaves that fall off the trees. And this cycles every year. Every time we go around the sun, this cycle happens here at Mount Jefferson. So that's a little bit of the story. What do you think? That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's really cool. Really, really. We are, we are learning. We're always learning more and more about how this all works. We don't have all the answers to this question. Maybe some of the story that the Indians tell about the plants and animals talking to each other, maybe, they're, maybe there's something we can learn from that. But what we do know for sure is that our earth does go around the sun and that, that light intensity, the amount of light that is shining on the plants is shut down. There's less light and the plants they're not making as much food. So rather than wasting all their energy, they turn yellow or turn orange or turn purple or turn red and they start to fall off during the season, waiting for the spring. Now, when does spring start? Do you know what month spring usually starts at? Sure. What do I'm you think? saying after, um, winter yeah it definitely starts after winter um so i a lot i like to think maybe march Oops, uh, okay. spring starts in april in april march and april yeah 
Now, one of the things that happens in the spring up on Mount Jefferson is we have our poetry contest. And would you like to hear a quick poem? Let's what? see if I can get What? What was that contest that you just said? Yeah, we have a poetry contest where we ask what students. What is poetry? Let's listen. Listen to this. And this is an example of poetry. Are you ready? All right. Uh, it's autumn leaves so proud and it's so that was a quick example there so poetry is when um somebody writes a story or writes a few sentences that that sometimes they rhyme they don't have to rhyme um or sometimes they just describe what somebody's feeling about a place so every year we have our poetry contest and we invite students like you to write a poem about Mount Jefferson and about the plants or animals or about what you see or what you what you love about the park. And, and as a poem, uh-huh. Um, when, when do you have the contest? We usually have it after, um, after New Year's. So I will let your teachers know and we will have prizes like tents, sleeping bags, backpacks, and telescopes. Those will be the prizes that we'll give out and we will we'll contact your teachers and they'll let you know. And then you could write a poem. It can be any length, any style, and just write about what maybe you like about animals in the park, what you like about Ash County mountains, what you like about Mount Jefferson. And if you, if you wanna write about some science too, you could win the telescope and that's the Poetry of Science Award that we offer too, so. I just covered a lot there, I think. Maybe too much. So let's let's take this last couple of minutes to see if y'all have any questions. I've got about two or three more minutes. So if y'all have any questions, um, let me see if I can get everybody on the main screen here. So, okay. I see Graham, do you have a question? Go press the space bar. Don't forget to press the space bar, Graham. And I still can't hear you. It's that long bar down, that long button at the bottom of your keyboard. Okay. How about Kim? Let's see who Kimberly. Do you have a question? And my name is Zachary. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm just reading the name. I'm sorry. I'm just reading the name. So, okay. Uh, yeah, my mom's name is Kimberly. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's really hard for me to see. All I could see is a name. So I just went with that. Go ahead. What's your question? Um, My question. Sorry, forgot. Oh, I do that too. I'm always forgetting things. So that's, we can come back to you. How about, um, how oh, about you have it? Actually you do, do. Do you remember it now? Wanna know why a coyote sound? What's that? Um, what does a coyote sound like? I don't do coyotes very well, but I can tell you another animal that makes a call out here on Mount Jefferson that is in the fall, and you might hear it on your back porches. So listen for I, this one. I heard Maybe a coyote. Tonight. Have you all ever heard of a screech owl? <gasps> oh, that's my favorite kind of owl. Is it? Okay, Grant. So the screech owl kind of makes a We hear those sometimes up here on Mount Jefferson. Normally we hear the barred owl, which does a more of a <coughs> who cooks for you all. <coughs> so that's another owl that we have up here. So listen for owls, especially the screech owl during the fall. That's a that's a real common owl to hear in Ash County in the fall. Did you, know, kinda... did you know a fact how the dinosaurs got dead? From 
From the what? Ice Age. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a whole other story. We'll do dinosaurs another day. Um, I I guess I probably should start right. Brittany, or is that is that your name? <laughs> I'm gonna get into trouble. That is my mom's name. That's okay. Brittany's daughter. <laughs> How's that? First graders, please remember that whatever name your parents put in is what we see on the screen. So yeah. if he does not know your name, just just nod and it'll be okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah. he can only you see can tell me. what was typed in. You can tell him, yeah. Yeah, you can tell. What's your question? And tell me your name, please, again first, because I'm bad with names. My name is Raylan. Raylan. Okay. Now, what's your question? If what would you want to know? Yeah, hope I can answer it. It's not a question. Okay. I wanted to tell you something. Okay. I made you a card. Oh, nice. Okay. Can you hold it up? It, this is the fun of it. It's supposed to say Tom. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, having a, like a card like that just really puts a smile in my heart and in, in my in my on my face too thank you any other quick questions before i i guess i gotta i have to start putting away stuff in case it rains but there's the sun's coming out look at that um any other questions okay um butterflies really eat my do flies Butterfly. Oh, butterflies. Okay. Oh, there's an inchworm crawling on my leg right now, by the way. I don't know if y'all can. Can y'all see it? Yes. That's pretty cool. That's the neat thing about a park. You never know what you're going to see or what's going to be crawling on you next. That's. A, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if butterflies, maybe they use mud for something. Normally, butterflies that I know of use nectar from flowers. But there Some might be a butterflies have really long tongues. Yeah, that's something. That, then um, that's called. You want a fancy word for that? That's called a proboscis, the thing that sticks out of certain bugs, like um, like mosquitoes. When a mosquito lands on you and sticks the little thing into you, that's called a proboscis. And also with butterflies, that's also called a proboscis. So there's your big. That's your fancy word for the day, if you want that one. Mosquitoes love to bite me <laughs> okay well that's the way they make their baby mosquitoes you that's what they do in their cycle they use our blood to make baby mosquitoes you so i mean you gotta love the cute little baby mosquitoes right uh probably not no, i don't not. want to because when baby <laughs> mosquitoes um they grow up into the same thing they do and that's a, another cycle that we have in our parks we have little baby creatures that grow up into bigger creatures and then they have babies. And that's why we don't have to really bring in a lot of animals from other places. They all naturally live here in the park and they find their own food, they find their own water, they find their own habitat, their own places to sleep. And they live all on their own, just like they've done for a long, long time. That's what's so different about a park from say a zoo or a farm where the animals are kept and fed. So I think on that point, I, I don't want to overdo my time. I'm, I'm already, I'm looking like my, t my time is already getting close. I want to thank you all so much for your, your time and your attention. And I hope to see you all again really soon on our next Zoom meeting. Welcome. Right, everybody. Let's uh, hold out, everybody at the same time, hold down your space bar and say, thank you, Ranger Tom. Thank you, Ranger Tom. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Well, this is Ranger Tom signing off from Mount Jefferson. Until next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Anyway, that was like a comic book.